Good morning, everybody. Welcome back from Insolvenous God Selections here for Wednesday, November 29th. For again, today's play of the day, a quick recap what happened yesterday. We had a loss in college basketball with Ryder team total under 56.5 at minus 120 on DraftKings. It looked good for about a half. Ryder scored 27 in the first half, so we were on pace. But then the game absolutely exploded in the second half. A reminder, Ryder was averaging about 55 points per game all season long against D1 competition, and they scored 48 points against Stony Brook last game. 48 points in the entire game. In the second half against Maryland, they scored 49 points. They scored more points in a half than the entire game against Stony Brook as they finished the game in the 70s. So the second half, once again, completely exploded. 98 combined points. And we picked up a loss. Look for a winner here on Wednesday. And for today's play of the day, go to the NBA. Go look at a matchup between the Suns and the Raptors taking place at around 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. And for this game, I'm going to take the Suns minus 1.5 and, and minus 115 on BetMGM. Time recording of 4 a.m. Eastern time. Coverings why we're going to take the Suns minus one and a half in this game. First reason, Phoenix has quietly been one of the hottest teams in the league is the Suns have won each of their last seven games by at least three points. Toronto, though, in addition to being a below average team, has a pretty bad scheduling spot because they did play yesterday in the uh, in-season tournament as they lost in Brooklyn. And now they're on the second of a back-to-back with travel. So Toronto is not exactly in a great scheduling spot. Phoenix, for comparison, has not played since Sunday against the Knicks. So there is a multiple-day rest advantage here for the Suns. And I think they should end up showing uh, up as the more rested team for the spot in a route to it should be a pretty nice road win. But to go through the actual efficiency numbers, Phoenix is a much better offensive team. And defensively, these teams are pretty comparable. Phoenix ranks sixth in offensive rating and 18th in defensive rating. Toronto ranks 24th in offensive rating and 13th in defensive rating. But simply put in a back-to-back, I do question Toronto's overall stamina for this game, especially with Phoenix having a booker in the lineup who's been great. And they might have Durant back in the lineup, which is another reason why I do like Phoenix in the spot. Durant did not play the last two games with a foot injury. However, he ended up practicing on Tuesday. So there is a decent chance he will be returning. They have not played since Sunday, but with him returning to practice on Tuesday, it does seem like he's in pretty good uh, shape to return to action for this game. And we know good Durant is uh, with the shooting numbers this season. Him and Booker are a great duo, and I do think Toronto's going to have trouble containing them in route to what should be a pretty solid offensive showing for the two of them in this matchup. But to go through the numbers without Durant, assuming the worst-case scenario, Phoenix has actually been good without Durant in the last two games. They are 2-0, and and in those two games, they rank second in offensive rating and ninth in defensive rating. So it does seem like Phoenix's supporting cast has kind of stepped up recently, and I do think that even if worst-case scenario, Durant does not play, Phoenix is not totally screwed. Now, of course, they would be a lot better off if Durant plays, but I do think that you're looking at Phoenix – who's been in pretty good form lately, uh, showing up for this matchup in good form once again. But to go through the actual trends here with the rest advantage and disadvantage for these teams, since 2022, Phoenix is 16 and 8 straight up with a rest advantage. And since 2022, Toronto is 7 and 11 straight up with a rest disadvantage. But simply put, you have a much more talented team in better form with a rest advantage, only laying one and a half. The line feels pretty short to me. I think Durant personally is going to come back, and I think this line will go up a couple of points. So I'll get it now before the line moves. Plug it once again here for Wednesday, November 29th. They're going to be on the Suns minus one and a half at minus 115 on BetMGM. Bye, everyone.